Well, coming up on today's show, the Audi e-tron GT does actually deserve the title of a Tesla fighter. Volkswagen unveil a new concept. This is the Buzz Cargo. And South Korea's SK Innovation building their first US EV battery plant. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. In fact, wherever you are on planet Earth, welcome to EV News Daily. It's Wednesday, the 28th of November, 2018. It's Martin Lee here. I've been through every EV story today that I could find so you don't have to. And thank you very much to myev.com for helping make this show. They have built the world's first marketplace all about buying and selling electric vehicles, custom designed to only give you the information you need and to find quickly efficiently the info you need uh, when you are buying and selling and researching electric cars. A quick note to kick off, by the way, I saw various reports today of Tesla sales being down 70-70% in China. I think it started with a Reuters report, which was then picked up by others and re-reported. And in fact, Tesla were even forced to issue a statement today completely denying it. The statement goes this, and I quote, This is wildly inaccurate. Whilst we do not disclose regional or monthly sales numbers, these figures are off by a significant margin. End statement. Well, the Model S and the X are both on sale in China, and there's a 40% import tax. That's pretty bad news, but Tesla are absorbing as much of that as they possibly can, and the Model 3 goes on sale early in the new year. Following up yesterday's big news about Rivian, they're making their new R1T and the R1S. They have unveiled more today about that SUV, seven-seater SUV doing over 400 miles of range, and that follows up their pickup truck, the R1T, coming in three different different battery sizes and again a very uh, envious spec for anyone else thinking about making pickup trucks and just a little word a comment from the youtube section in the last 24 hours we do put this podcast on youtube as audio only by the way lots of people like to get it that way even though it's a podcast Uh, this comment reads as is Rivian, Bollinger, Workhorse, Tesla, looks like good competition shaping up for Ford, GM and FCA in other words Ram conspicuous by their absence. I can hear the arguments shaping up now. The startups spend their time and money developing the technology and the market for a few years, then the big three swoop in and take over. And he says, ha ha, yeah, right, good luck with that. It's the same argument we've heard all along with companies like Tesla, that they're doing all the hard work now, and you just wait. All of those established car makers are going to come in and very easily just start instantly making a million EVs a year and show Tesla how it's done. And now we're finding out, and in fact, the other car companies are saying, yeah, uh, not as easy as it looked, actually. And se- several of them gave Tesla not so much a hard time, but they certainly made public statements like, oh, isn't that nice for Tesla making a few thousand electric cars? Yeah, you wait till we start. Well, we're still waiting, actually. So, yeah, maybe the same will be for pickup trucks. A lot of the big pickup makers saying, we don't need to make one just yet. But, you know, in two years' time, when there's those fantastic electric pickups on the market, where are the established makers going to be? Just a question that I thought I'd pose on the podcast. I'm sure you have as many opinions about it as I do. Audi unveiled sort of, their e-tron GT today, and I think it deserves the title of being a Tesla fighter, and I generally hate, regular listeners know, I generally hate anything Tesla killer, Tesla fighter, lazy, lazy, lazy headline writers, oh, here's the new car that Elon will be losing sleep about, in all of those cases completely wrong uh if you if it's if if ever you see the phrase tesla killer you know it's going to be a crappy article written by a very lazy journalist however i i think this car does deserve the title genuinely of being a tesla fighter at least it looks like a model s competitor well, it, it would do if you could buy one. The Audi e-tron GT that I teased yesterday has been revealed in camouflage form ahead of being revealed tomorrow or today, depending on when you're listening to this podcast, in its production form. It's a, basically an, I think, Audi A7. Big saloon. I would call it a saloon car. You might call it a sedan style. Audi A7 with batteries underneath it. Uh, I'm pretty confident that the VW-owned Porsche Taycan platform is going to be underneath it. And if so, and it had a 100 kilowatt hour battery, 
Mm, 250 miles would be my guess. I think most people would be happy with a 250 mile range on it. We'll know more tomorrow, as it's revealed at the LA Auto Show. For now, it looks like any premium Audi, and I think that's a really good thing for Audi buyers. It doesn't look like an EV, just looks like a regular, expensive, executive, four, five seater Audi that happens to have batteries. I worry about the efficiency, by the way, if it's going to go up to. Uh, head-to-head, toe-to-toe, with a Model S 100D. That's listed as 335 miles range EPA. It does 0-60 to in 4.2 seconds. I think that the Audi could match the performance. I'm not convinced that when we hear from the LA Auto Show that they are going to go toe-to-toe with the same size battery to get exactly the same range as a Tesla. Just my own gut feeling at the minute of how far ahead Tesla currently are on efficiency. The others have got a little catching up to do in terms of their own software developers and their own algorithms. However, I just I think it's just because how long Tesla have been doing it, how closely they work with Panasonic as their battery partner. However, if it can get near it, I think it'll be good enough. Uh, maybe we'll be surprised when the official stats are released. I don't predict the 800 volt system that is going to be in the Porsche Taycan. I do think though that the Audi stats that we've seen in the e-tron so far, the SUV, that would be 150 kilowatt charging as an absolute minimum. That'll definitely be there. And considering VW are part of the Ionity network in Europe and VW is rolling out Electrify America in the USA, I, I think that at some point they're going to have to start saying our cars will be even upgradable in the future, but start talking about 350 kilowatt charge speeds. From one concept to another, this time the VW ID Buzz Cargo. Yes, another another concept car from VW, based on the MEB platform, as they all will be. Similar to the Surfer's Dream EV that is the ID Buzz, that is the kind of Californian equivalent of the VW Camper, or whatever you would call that. It takes on the role of an electric VW transporter van. So no windows down the side of it, but some big double doors at the back. However, at best, it's four years away, due 2020. It's another one to be revealed in LA this week. VW saying perfect for last mile deliveries in cities, I would say, in four years' time. Can you imagine how many EVs are going to be used for last mile deliveries? Four years away, VW, come on! VW say this as the newest member of the ID family, a new generation of fully connected electric vehicles. Cargo features long-range driving capability, and depending on the size of the battery pack, Cargo can achieve ranges of 200 to 300 miles on the new WLTP test cycle. If the vehicle covers normal distances in the city on a daily or weekly basis, a lithium-ion battery with an energy capacity of 48 kilowatt hours is recommended. If greater range is needed, energy capacity can be increased up to, there is room up to on the platform, 111 kilowatt hours in the battery pack. Well, outside, the cargo concept is differentiated from the ID Buzz by a new solar roof, some wide opening rear doors to get all your cargo in and a new rear bumper. The solar roof adds nine miles of range a day with a view towards optimising cargo space. There's a shelving system inside, no sliding door on the side either, as is common with many of those commercial vehicles. But it's four years away. Still good, but come on VW. Well, South Korea's SK Innovation said on Monday it's going to spend 1.4, uh, 1.14 trillion won, that's about a billion dollars, to build its first EV battery plant in the United States to better compete with the global EV battery market. According to Auto News, the plant's going to have an annual capacity of 9.8 gigawatt hours of batteries. Well, SK Innovation's going to begin construction in the southeast US state of Georgia early next year. They'll get Christmas and New Year out of the way, then they'll kick off, right? And uh, that's kind of me speculating. Early 2019, they say. Production is targeted to start 2022. The company said in a statement, last month, SK Innovation confirmed it was considering building an EV plant in the US somewhere in order to win customers in one of the world's top markets for EVs. SK Innovation, uh, which owns South Korea's top refiner, SK Energy, and a unit of the country's uh, number three conglomerate, uh, supplies its batteries to several big automakers, Daimler and Hyundai, of course. It does not have a, any US clients at the moment, and they're looking for that to change. Well, zero emission motoring has become more affordable in the uh, down under in Australia as Hyundai launches its 44,000 
990 Aussie dollar pure electric Ionic. Well, the Ionic Electric is now Australia's cheapest pure electric car to buy, undercutting the Renault Zoe by several thousand Aussie dollars. The cheapest Tesla you can buy, by the way, is the Model S 75. Dual motor, of course, it is $146,000, according to news.com.au. And Phil Roberts, the MD of the solar and energy storage company here in the UK, Electric Future, asked the question on Twitter earlier today. Well, £25,600 is cheap, but that's not what it costs in the UK. That is a, a conversion that he just did from Aussie dollars to sterling. He says, actually, in the UK, it starts at £28,940. So, is that VAT, value-added tax, that we have in the UK being added on, or... Is it the usual UK premium? One of the kind of running jokes, if you like, but not a very funny joke, is that many Apple products are the same in dollars and pounds, even though the exchange rate should mean that in pounds, even if you add on VAT, and even though there's no sales tax, maybe on that headline price on the Apple store in the US, it still means that we pay a premium in the UK over and above. If you do the conversion, add the tax and all that kind of stuff, we still pay more. And finally, Green Car Reports have been listing their top LA auto show highlights. Uh, they start off with the Audi e-tron GT that I talked about earlier and that we were talking about on the show yesterday. They talk about the BMW Vision iNext. Now, this has been revealed earlier this year. This is one of those cars that in the, it's very concepty at the moment, full of thick carpet and armchairs, uh, no steering wheel and full of screens and things and lots of ideas like you just say, Hmm, car, take me to the shops. So, very concepty, but always interesting to see where BMW are up to with their vision of the future, and it's called the Vision iNext. The Byton K-Byte was seen in Shanghai earlier this year. I think Byton make really beautiful cars, by the way, and the Byton K-Byte is being unveiled in LA for the auto show. The new Kia Soul EV with the brand new battery size, 39 0.2 kilowatt hour battery would be exactly the same as the base model, the standard range Kia e Nero. So if they've just got a battery contract with LG Chem, SK Innovation, I'm not sure which one, by the way, for 39.2 kilowatt hour batteries, I'm imagining they'll put them in both the Soul EV and the e Nero. The new Nissan Leaf 60 kilowatt hour was almost a dead cert to be unveiled at the LA Auto Show because they had two events booked, one in Europe and one in their home market as well, which have been cancelled, as I told you yesterday on the show. If you missed that, download yesterday's for the reason why. The new Nissan Leaf with the big battery, LG Chem the supplier, active thermal management. We're so excited about it. It's not happening for now. And it's really weird. Their, their statement said that we are the postponement statement almost reads like they're postponing the car. I've been reassured they're not postponing the launch of it. They're merely postponing the press launch and that we will get the car at some point. 100 kilowatt Chanamo charging speeds was on the cards as well. We saw some leaked shots on the internet earlier this year of it being plugged into a ultra-fast Chanamo charger and actually exceeding 100 kilowatts on that. I think it was a 99% certainty almost you know there was like that one percent doubt in my mind it was going to be seen in la as well now shelved the rivian r1t and the r1s that i talked about earlier is on their list the r1s of course being the seven seat suv and finally the subaru cross check hybrid uh, cross trek hybrid is being unveiled in la it's a plug-in subaru it's got a plug it comes with toyota technology under the skin of course toyota do make things like the plug-in prius and they make plug-ins for china it's got 17 miles of pure ev range it's only really in other markets like here in the uk where toyota have a very very public campaign against evs they say we make hybrids that never need to be plugged in and that's difficult in a global market these days and like this podcast has a global audience and so it's really weird for me to say Toyota are the company that don't like plug-in hybrids and then because they have this big big campaign it's always in my Twitter feed we're the company that don't believe in plugging in they say that the best kind of EV to buy is one that doesn't have a plug that are soft hybrids because that's their UK market and yet when I talk about it I get emails all the time from people going uh hang on what you said is wrong they make the Prius Prime and I'm like yeah I know because I think it's weird it's weird to have local marketing campaigns these days for a global car maker when everyone's being like hang on that's weird toyota get your house in order of course 
they would say their house is in order and they're making lots of money and lots of cars thank you very much well thank you very much for listening to today's podcast the question of the week is online as always it was a new question set on sunday send me your answers i'll read them out on sunday and set a new question as always thanks to myev.com who posed this question perhaps it's the ultimate question of questions how do we solve the problem of people parking in charging bays and people have asked me what do you mean by that do you mean fossils or being uh, i I mean everything i mean being iced but also plug-in hybrid drivers leaving their car on a rapid charger for eight hours and and those charging uh companies not charging overstay fees and all that kind of stuff this is not a dig at plug-in hybrid drivers many of which listen to this show by the way so i mean the general problem that we have i want to say a very heartfelt thank you to 121 patrons of this show and if you want to join their number patreon.com slash ev news daily that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash ev news daily you can support either at posh coffee level or super posh coffee level for ten dollars a month and there are 309 previous episodes of this show online for free wherever you get your podcasts from if you subscribe you don't have to think about downloading it you just get it first and free and automatically every day if in return you can leave a little review a couple of words a star rating one star five star whatever you think it's worth then i'd be super super grateful for that in the meantime catch up on the socials by searching for ev news daily have a wonderful day i'll catch you tomorrow